Hey guys, it's Casey from the Montreal Student Network, and today we're going to be looking at functional class and substitutive nomenclature. Now, substitutive nomenclature is the one we're most familiar with, so I'll start with it now, because uh, it's the one we've seen in previous chapters, it's the one you're introduced with, it's the one that your teacher most likely called UPAC naming, and it's the one that we normally use. Now, this is, video is focusing on alcohol halides. I'll make another one for naming alcohols later on, so if you're looking for alcohols, you'll go later on, but the only time you actually look at the difference between substitutive and functional class class is when you're looking at alkyl halides or alcohols. So what is substitutive nomenclature? I'm going to draw out a compound right over here and we'll have some examples later on so we can look at the difference. I'm going to draw one right over here. We'll see we have a little, you know, a straight chain carbon with our um, a little functional group on there which will be a uh, chloride which will make it an alkyl halide and I'm going to draw another one over here because we're going to be doing this twice one with each one. Now what does substitutive nomenclature tell us to do? Now you'll probably remember we want to number the longest carbon chain. Now we're going to want to number that in the direction that gives the lowest number to the first substituent. You know we covered this before and I have videos on it so if you want to go back and refresh your minds uh, I'll put a link in the description so you guys can go and look at that in detail. I have a ton of examples going over it, but you know the basics, we want to cover uh, the longest carbon chain. So obviously the longest carbon chain, it's five. It will have a pentane uh, you know, parent compound. And we have our lowest number to our functional group, which is a chloride. And then we're going to go name this. We're going to want to put our, the, where our functional groups are. So we're going to note that two is the location of our functional group, a hyphen to separate all numbers and letters. And we're going to write chloro, because that's our chloride. We indicate that chloro. And then we're going to want to write our parent compound, which is pentane. Five carbons yields pentane. And I have all videos covering all this kind of stuff, like determining the parent compound. So that's what we call substitutive nomenclature. We have everything as one word. So we're going to write that down because that's one thing that's going to differentiate functional class from substitutive. Substitutive. One word names. Now these names can have hyphens in it. You know, this will be one word. Everything is stuck together. And it's, you know, it's traditionally what we've learned in the first parts of organic chemistry. Now, functional class is where stuff gets a little bit different. This only appears for alkyl halides and alcohols. So I'm going to, this video will be covering alkyl halides. If you want alcohols, I'll make a video later on. But this only works for alkyl, alkyl halides and alcohols, at least the ones for the um, beginning of it. It's going to be two words. You're going to have two different words for your name rather than one. And to start off, you're going to want to start numbering from your halide, not from the longest carbon chain. You don't care about the longest carbon chain. The first thing you look at is where is your halide right over here. Now you start numbering the longest carbon chain from that point. So one has to be over here. We're not going to go and put the two over here because that's definitely not the longest carbon chain. We're going to put the two, three, and four right over there. Now, what is our compound that's not you know, what is our R group? Considering that the CL will be attached to the R group, what is the CL attached with? Considering that we're starting one over here. Well, we can count that there is four carbons. Well, obviously, one, two, three, and four carbons in the longest carbon chain, which would be butyl. Considering that this is no longer the parent compound, it's actually going to have to end with YL. It's, the but it's obviously a butane chain, but since it's not the parent compound in this case, we're actually using the CL as the parent compound. We're going to call it butyl. And what's attached to it? We obviously have this guy over here, which is a methyl group, CH3. So, And it's also attached to number one. So we're going to have one methyl butyl. That uses somewhat the same name that we have over here, except we're no longer keeping that A and E ending. We're putting it a Y L. Now we're not done yet. It's two words, like I said. What is the last word going to be? Well, you're going to look at what that you know what your hal. <coughs> Sorry about that. What your halide is, and you're going to put that as a second word, chloride. So just to refresh. We're going to have your halide. And remember that IDE ending, you know, it might be tempting, tempting to write chlorine, but that's not, it's not a halide. Chlorine is when you have Cl2. Uh, when it's on its own, it's chloride. It's a halide, not a halogen. So uh, halide, you're going to want chloride. And you're going to want the first word is going to be what is attached to that chloride starting from that point of attachment. We're going to have a lot of examples later on. It does seem confusing. It's redundant. It's not a system that you're normally going to have to use very often, but it's good to know just in case. And that will be one methyl butyl. So this would be functional class. 
and we're going to go right to the examples right now, but we just need those two different things. Just know that functional class is two words. That's what you're going to be looking for. One word, two words. So let's go right down. I have a bunch of examples for you guys. We see on the left, I have the functional class nomenclature. And on the right, I have the substitutive nomenclature. So we can easily uh, look at them both ways and see how they differ from one another. We'll start off with substitutive nomenclature because we've done them already. I'm going to solve one, one at a time, one of each. And then we'll move over to the functional. But I'll start with the um, substitutive because we've seen it before. So what are we looking at? What are our priorities? First priority, what is our longest carbon chain? We start from over here. We start from this guy and we finish at this guy. That is our longest carbon chain. I think it's pretty obvious and we can all agree on that. So how should we be naming this? Like how should we number it? We obviously want to give the lowest number to this little guy over here, our substituent. So we'll start numbering from over here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's a hexane parent chain. Our chloro group, which is what we use for the halides in this case, is on number three. So we're going to obviously do it three, hyphen chloro hexane and that's how we would name that with function uh, substitute if we see that it's one word that's the biggest thing that we're going to be looking for in these circumstances now how would we name this in functional class nomenclature what are the steps that we want to follow first step is what is your halide because we're looking at alkyl halides here where is your halide Let's circle it. You know, just go ahead and circle it right there. That's where it is. So now we need to see where is the longest carbon chain from that halide. Well, we can start going one, two, three, and four. If we went in this direction, we'd be stuck at three. That's definitely not our longest um, carbon chain. So that is our longest carbon chain from the halide. It's kind of confusing. It's a different system than the one we saw before. So we'll go look at a lot of examples and it will be a bit clear. So we're going to start off before we go for the second part of the word, we're going to want to get the first part. And now we see that our parent group is a butyl group, like we saw before. Now what is attached to this? We have two carbons. Now what do we call a alkyl group that has two carbons? It's not a methyl group because that's when you have one carbon, but when it's CH2, CH3, it's actually an ethyl group. And I'll, I'll right here, I'll write that this is uh, including this, this one over here too. That's a uh, butyl parent. It's kind of like a sub parent because it's not going to be at the end of the word. So in this case, since ethyl is attached to the first carbon, we'll have one ethyl butyl. Now we're going to remember that has to end with YL because we're going over to a second word. Now we're going to have chloride. And that is going to be your name in functional class, and that's going to be your name in substitutive. Looks weird, but really remembering that one word for the substitutive and two word for the functional class can be the difference between you knowing and understanding this and uh, getting a bit confused with it. So we'll move on to the next one over here. This one seems kind of simple. It's a smaller one right now, so there's less things to concern ourselves with. We'll start off with, obviously, the, let's go back up here a little just so you can keep the rest of the plane in sight. We see this one is substitutive on the right, so we're going to look. What is our longest carbon chain? Boom, right over there. Obviously, that's our one, one carbon. And what do we have attached to there? We have bromide. And since it's substitutive, we're going to be calling it bromo instead of bromide. And it's attached to carbon number one. So we're just going to call this one bromo methane. Or since in the circumstance that there's no ways you can misinterpret one bromomethane, you know that the bromo or the bromide has to be attached to the CH3, you can simply call it bromomethane. But it needs to stay one word. That's the most important part of the substitute of nomenclature. It needs to stay one word. We see how that's all stuck together. Now, how would we differentiate that when we go to this one over here? Well, obviously, we need to see that we have our bromide right over here. That's our parent compound that's going to appear the second word. And figuring out the first word, we're obviously going to start numbering right there. We know that's the first one. That is going to be methyl. And, you know, like before, we don't need to go and put the one because it'll be kind of redundant. This will simply be called methyl bromide. So you can, you can see that this is the resemblance between the two namings. They do come out somewhat similar. We have bromomethane and we have methyl bromide. It's really a thing just knowing 
two words versus one word. That's I'm going to keep saying that over and over because it's the most important thing. If you can just understand that one wants two words and the other one wants one word, you know, it makes it that much more simple to actually uh, figuring it out because it's kind of redundant. It is redundant. I'll, I'll admit that it is. Um, okay, we're going to go down to ones that get a bit more confusing where we're going to want to really know our nomenclature rules to be able to solve these ones. Um, remember, on the right, we'll have our substitutive. So we're going to start off over there. We see that we have two substituents in this case. We have you know, a long carbon chain right here, but we also have you know, a CH3 group here and a CL group here. Now, for alkyl halides, the CL or your chloride, your halide, whatever is attached, does not take priority over anything. You are still looking for the um, giving the lowest numbers to the, the substituents, right? So numbering it like, well, look at the two ways you can number it. You can number it like this, one, two, three, four, five, and six, which would give priority to your uh, CL group, or you can number it in the other direction. So what would this give us? This would give us a three and a five. Now let's look at the other direction. What numbers would we get if we do not give priority to the halide? We'll do one, two. So we see already right there, we have a lower number. Two is lower than three. So we're going to want this way more than the other one. We don't care that we are giving priority to um, the methyl group over the chloride group. You don't care. In, in substitutive naming, you do not care. And see, two, four, obviously less than three and five. Uh, <clears throat> you're just looking for the first point of difference. So because the two is less than the three, you want to number it this way. And how are we going to name it? Well, we're obviously remembering alphabetical order. Our longest chain is a hexane chain. On number four, we have a chloride. And on number two, we have a methyl. C comes before M. So we're going to start four chloro, two methyl, always separating your um, numbers and letters with hyphens, and hexane to end it off. I'm going through the substitutive ones a little quickly just because I have many videos that explain how to do the naming. It's, it's traditional naming. Uh, looking over to the one over here, this is where stuff gets a little bit confusing. Because remember, with the functional class naming, we need to start off giving, you know, start off numbering at our chloride group right over here. So where does number one start? Number one goes here. Where is our longest carbon chain? It goes this way. It doesn't matter which way you put for this one, just for you know making it easy to understand. I'll put it over here. And now we have our two substituents. We have methyl substituent. We have an ethyl substituent over here. And we have our, our you know our butyl subparent over here with our four carbons. So Naming it, remember, we're going to keep it the same naming. We're kind of having like a mini substitutive naming session over here. So let's start off with the first part of the name, the first word. So we're going to look and see we have one, two, three, and four. On our carbon number one, we have an ethyl group. And on our carbon number three, we have our methyl group. We're still going to keep that alphabetical order for this first part. So we're going to start off by writing one ethyl, three methyl. So obviously E comes before M, so that's why we're going to write it in this order. And now we're going to write, this part here stays in one word, and our parent compound is butyl. And now obviously, since it's functional class, we need to have two names, and we see that our halide is a chloride, we can write chloride. Now once again, you see, you see the names, they do, they're starting to look different. Obviously this one, it's in one word, I'm always going to keep saying that, and this one over here is in two words. That's the biggest difference between these two things. Um, you see that when you're making the first part of your compound, your first part of your name and functional class, you do follow the same substitutive name rules. You know, you want to have alphabetical order, uh, longest carbon chain, you want to not give priority to any groups, you just want to number it longest carbon chain, giving the lowest uh, numbers to your locants if you have that option, but you do want to start from your, your halide, so you don't normally have that many decisions to make as you will in this one over here. Let's look at our last options right over here, where we do get a little bit more, uh, a little bit confusing. Uh, we see that in this circumstance, no matter how you number um, this one over here, you'll have the, the same numbers, right? If you number one, two, three, four, and five, you'll get the same locants as if you were numbering one, two, three, four, and five. We see that we have two and five in each circumstance. Now, how do we want to number this? Um, there is a way. When you have this symmetry, you know, where you will get two and four as the numbers when you're numbering it, no matter which way you do it, you do look for the alphabetical order. What 
name does this substituent have for the substitute of naming? It has chloride, chloro. Chloro is the name that you will be having. What name does this one have? It has methyl. That's the part that's going to be appearing in your name. The C comes before the M. So in this circumstance, we'll give the lowest number to the one that's appearing first in the name. So one, two, three, four, and five is how we do it. We're going to start writing it out on carbon number two. We have chloro. So two hyphen chloro. Number four, we have our methyl group four methyl. And then our parent group, five carbons, pentane. And that's how we name it with substitutive naming. Now, obviously, those rules do not apply for your functional class naming. You don't care that you can number it both ways. You know, a functional class looks at that and says, who cares? I don't care. You want to look, give your priority to your chloride group. Your halide gets priority. One, two, three, four, numbering the longest carbon chain. We now see that we have methyl group. Over here, we have another one, a methyl group, and obviously our chloride. And our parent compound, once again, is a butyl 1, 2, 3, and 4, 4 carbons. So we're going to start off by numbering on number carbon number 1 and carbon number 3. We have methyl groups, so 1, comma, to separate numbers, 3, hyphen, di, methyl, butyl, since we have 4 carbons. Since it's functional class, for the 10th time this video, you need to have two words, chloride. And that's how you do naming for functional class and substitute. So we'll look over one little time. We see that the names, they, they are different. Uh, you know, they have, some of them have similar elements to it. So see this one has, whoops, this, this got removed from the end of the word. I think I backspaced too many times. Um, you see that this one, methyl bromide, one bromomethane, they have their similarities to them. But the biggest thing that you're going to want to know is one word names for substitutive and for functional class, you have two word names. It's probably the biggest difference between the two of them. So if you need extra help on substitute of naming, like you didn't really know what that was this video, I have more videos on my channel. It's called UPAC naming. Uh, it's, it's the one you'll use the most. It's the one that you'll use throughout the course. Once in a while, you'll have functional class naming. You might have only one or two questions in the whole course, but those one, two points may be the difference between getting a 90 and an 89, you know, those little, little difference in marks that you want to do bump yourself up. So uh, thank you very much for, oops, oh, <laughs> almost dropped my stylus pad. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them below because I know this is a very confusing subject. I'll, um, you know, contact me on Twitter. I'll answer you guys in under uh, four hours five hours you know just it goes right to my phone and i can answer you guys if you have a question you know what is this compound i'll tell you guys the name in functional class i'll tell you to in substitute of nomenclature and you guys will be perfect so thanks for watching and have yourselves a great day goodbye